the worst part of, of ski videos is when the person's about to start talking. You get them trying to explain this amazing activity that's inexplicable and they just they can't do it justice. Just roll to the action. Noah Howell, and this is my adorable dog Hugo, and we're hanging out at the yurt in the Wasatch Mountains just outside Salt Lake City, Utah. Born and raised in Salt Lake City. Didn't grow up skiing. Got into it late after high school, but then went all in. Based my whole life around being able to ski as much as possible. My brother and I started Powder Horror Productions, film company. Just started carrying around my dad's camcorder, filming buddies, and just kind of evolved from there. Gorilla style, just really more about the skiing than production value, um, low budget, good times. I'm 44 years old and I have my first salaried position uh, with Fly Low. I'm a marketing assistant. I go way back with Fly Low. When we started Powder Horror Productions, we started taking it on tour and having really fun turnouts, you know, and little parties, getting people fired up for winter. Dan and Greg were just starting Fly Low and they hit me up They're like, hey, can we sell some pants at your premiere? I'm like, sure, man, good luck. So they rolled in with like a rack, but like with one pair of pants on it and maybe a t-shirt. It was it was pretty funny. It was but it fit perfectly with what Powder Horror was doing and where we were at. We thought it would make us look a little more legit to have, you know, brands involved. Actually our first film we didn't have sponsors, but we just put a couple of companies' logos on there. They didn't even know that they were sponsoring our film just so it would look more professional. After Powder Horror I kind of followed the semi-pro ski uh, path and then I just kind of dove into like my personal desires like what do I want to do in the mountains what are the lines I want to ski and that kind of took it far into the ski mountaineering realm I kind of found the edge went up to Alaska and skied Archangel Ridge one of the longest lines continuous lines you can maybe ski on the planet uh, we skied 11,000 foot run really technical hard to get to I was like you know what I think I might be good this might be my limit. This might be as far as I want to take this. So I wrote down the this, this silly bucket list of like, well, what do I want to do now that I've taken the ski mountaineering as far as I want to go? And the only thing that came up was like, build a cabin. So that's how the yurt came into play. It's kind of just been a raging forest fire in the past of like, I got to ski everything, I got to do everything. And I feel like now I'm able to build the more sustainable, continual flame and know when to add a log and when to back off and just let it cool off. The year for me is tapping back into nature and getting out of the city. I used to think it was getting away, but it's more like getting in touch with the moment and with what's going on and with like just slowing down. 10 years with Powder Horror showed me to follow that madness, follow those dumb ideas that may or may not work out. I've always liked to blur the lines between work and play. What's important to you? What are those puzzle pieces? And how do you make it work? And that's a constant adapting, constant interplay. And that's fun. That's why I love the Wasatch, that close proximity allows you to go ski a 3,000 foot line, fun track powder, in the morning and then like you're good for the rest of the day. Yeah, in the end, it's like get your shit done so you can be ready for the next powder day.